everybody. Broad time. Wow. Oh. What did y'all think of this show last night? I thought it kind of sucked. Although there were two. There was one great match, and there was one very good match. But outside of that, there was a lot of bad wrestling on this show. That was the biggest issue. Sometimes, like, the raw booking is just completely nonsensical. And there are a few things on the show that are nonsensical. But the bigger issue here was the matches weren't good. It's like one boring or bad match after another. So And it was nonsensical. It opens up with this big segment setting up a match with Keith Lee and Sheamus, where the winner gets a title shot next week against Drew McIntyre. And they spend, like, five minutes with Drew and Sheamus going back and forth and vowing to just pound on each other as hard as possible and kick off the new year with a great match to then give us Sheamus and Keith Lee in the most boring match I've ever seen and Keith Lee wins so they're not even giving you the match that they teased you with, which I presume means you're going to get that match at the Royal Rumble, but we shall see. Just a nothing match. Keith Lee just sells and sells and sells and sells and sells. Quick comeback, Powerbomb beats him. That was that. We have Miz and Grand Metallic, which, given my expectations, it exceeded them. But of all the matches, you, you put Miz in there, whose gimmick is he never catches anybody correctly, against a guy who does a bunch of high-flying in Lucha. Somehow, they kept it simple enough. It was like, Grand Metallic did three spots, he got cut off, Miz put him in a few holds, Grand Metallic get, does three more spots, and then he pins him with a cradle. So it was idiot-proofed, but... This is hardly the greatest match I ever saw. Miz is ready to cry afterwards. He's so despondent that he has lost the Money in the Bank briefcase. He has given up hope of ever being Mr. Money in the Bank again. That's important, by the way. We have Omos and AJ walking into the Drifters locker room. They have so many heels on the show that now the heels are just feuding with each other. So that got set up there. Shayna faced Dana Brooke. This match was very... The match was... How can I say this? Shayna was very good. I don't want to say anything not nice about Dana Brooke. But I just did. So they do the match. Shayna wins. And then Shayna chokes out Mandy for good measure. Okay. I guess they're out of the running for any tag team matches. Alexa's in the ring on her swing set at her fake playground. She's smiling and she's singing. And for the second week in a row... She's making jokes about Bray Wyatt being burnt to a crisp. Ha ha ha! A lot of heat in that match, she says. This is not Randy saying this. This is Alexa making jokes about Bray being burnt to a crisp. So she's all happy, and then Randy Orton appears on the big screen. He starts beating up puppets in the playhouse. Now Alexa's crying. <laughs> she challenges him. To face her later in the evening. <laughs> I'm like, ugly cry. what is going on here? What? But we'll get to that. <laughs> Charlie's with Charlotte. Her usual stupid question, are you ready for Naya? Charlotte's like, yes, I'm ready for Naya. Okay, well, I'm glad we got that handled. AJ faces Elias. Another not good match. AJ tried his best, but the match is boring. Elias gets the heat on the guy. Almost scares. I mean, listen, whatever you want to say about Gunner, Jackson Riker, this dude was in war. But man, he takes one look at Omos and he has to take a bump and flee in fear. So AJ hits the forearm and wins, and I don't know what the point of this was. It's a waste of time, I guess. Ricochet versus Ali, finally a great match. These guys were awesome. This is like a match that you would see on 205 Live or main event that only like, you know, 5,000 people see, but it's great. We actually got to see it on Raw. These guys kill each other. They almost killed poor T-Bar and Mace when Ricochet's doing all these spinning DDTs to the floor and these guys are landing on their heads. Apparently they're both okay. Thank God. But finally, as Ricochet's beating up all these guys right in front of the ref that's not a DQ, he gets back in the ring. He misses the shooting star. All he gets the knees up and then puts him in the Koji clutch and submits Ricochet. So Ricochet ran the gauntlet but was beaten in every match to lead to, hey, bro, you're a loser. You should join Retribution. But he refuses. So I guess the feud must continue. And we're supposed to care, even though, like, the story is he's such a loser that he ends up joining, but he doesn't join. So he's just a loser. But at least the match was good. So I'll give him that. 
But Nia Jax doing a promo and some other promos. Then Charlotte faces Nia. Another match that was not good. There's a spot where Charlotte is desperately trying to get Nia through the ropes. Nia will not budge. It's fake. Like, why are we not cooperating here? Time stands still. And finally, Charlotte does like her third sliding dropkick. Finally gets her out of the ring. They do all of these spots, and finally Charlotte goes for the figure four, and Shayna runs in, puts her in the choke for the DQ. I don't care about this feud. Nothing here made me care. Bad match. That's that. It was horrible. Angel and Charlie doing some stuff. Dave last night was arguing that Angel actually had one relationship, which was with that bachelorette woman who i guess is coming back next week yeah well oh the legend demi burnett not just that but like he didn't have a relationship with her the story was he kept showing up with her and she wanted ivar and then he ran away when retribution showed up so this we don't even know we thought she was part of retribution we didn't know they never clued us in on this and then we had new day jeff hardy and riddle versus the hurt business this match was good the finish for the fourth time everybody was Bobby Lashley submitted Jeff Hardy with the Hurt Lock. So my presumption is the idea is we got to get Jeff Hardy over. We'll make him lose to the same hold for 11 straight weeks. And then we'll put him in a title match, but right before he gets it, we're going to injure him and take him out of the show. That's what I think is happening here. I can't think of any other explanation. Your Lana, so he's getting the Lana treatment. Yes, he's getting the Lana push here. Four straight weeks he's been submitted by the Hurt Lock. You got a better idea? I don't. Hmm. And then finally, Alexa comes out and calls out Randy. Now, as dumb as his storyline is, for two weeks now, Alexa's come out, she's laughed, and she's joked, and she's talked about how the fiend got turned into a hot dog or whatever. He's burnt to a crisp, he's laughing about it. All these burning jokes. Well, all of a sudden now, she's in tears that he's been burnt to a crisp. I'm like, bro, the storyline's dumb enough, but now you've got a dumb story that it doesn't even make sense. Why was this a joke to Alexa until Randy beat up some puppets and now she's in tears that the guy got burnt up? What's going on here? So she wants Randy to burn her to a crisp. Randy says, well, I'd like to burn you to a crisp, but the fact of the matter is you want to be burnt to a crisp, so I'm not going to do it. So she pours gasoline all over herself and... The final moments of the show, the lights go out. Randy lights the match underneath his his chin. He's cosplaying Roddy Piper. He... <laughs> it's about to drop it and the show ends. Whoa. So, was she burnt to a crisp? Well, I don't know. They went right to Raw Talk, where they didn't even address that Alexa was apparently burnt to a crisp on the show that I just watched. I go to WWE.com. Oh, what do they say about it? There's a big splash headline. Alexa Bliss invites Randy Orton to the Playhouse. Oh, I got to find out what they say happened. I click on it. Whole review of the show, and the review ends with the Hurt Business match. No mention of what happened. So, I don't know. They don't know. Nobody knows. But, as always, we're supposed to care. Did you skip over The Miz getting the briefcase back? Oh, yeah, that was the other one. So... Miz is on the steps, and he's despondent. He has resigned himself to the fact that I lost the Money in the Bank briefcase, and I blew it. So then, Adam Pierce just walks up and says, You know, you're right. The rules state the Money in the Bank title holder has to cash in, and Morrison was the one that gave the briefcase to the ref. So we're giving you your briefcase back. I'm like, dude, five seconds. Something involving Mrs. Lawyer or there's yeah. been a lawsuit or something where your hand is forced and per the rules you like have to... No, the guy already gave up hope and now you just come back and give it to him. So if you thought I was mad about Ibushi uh, getting beaten for the briefcase and still getting a main event at the Tokyo Dome, bro, this is a thousand times worse. Otis won... Not even in the same Otis realm. won when the briefcase fell off the ladder and he caught it. Well, seems to me that per the rules, that's not allowed either. The rules say you got to climb up and get it. Well, Otis didn't do that. Well, that one's apparently okay. So Otis has the briefcase. 
then something happens and there's like a lawsuit or something. I don't even remember some stupid story. And then Miz gets it. And then Miz, like literally they do the match. Whether Miz was the one that handed the briefcase to the referee or not, he was totally into doing the match. It wasn't against his will. So he does a dumb match and he loses. And now they give the briefcase back to him. I mean, sell me on this next year, everybody. Good luck. As a fan, I don't care. This money in the bank thing is a is a just a it's a joke. But everything's a joke, so that's raw. They they could not have done a a presidential thing played up. They could have had a meeting in front of like, you know, total landscaping or four seasons total landscaping to to, to the Miz fighting this to give him some reason to get why does he have it back? But then again, why does anything happen on this show? Did almost an AJ stand out there and knock for an entire segment waiting for for Elias to open the door? I mean, there were a lot of questions about this show. None of them were good. Ricochet losing his way through Retribution doesn't make Retribution look good and wanting this guy in there, and they keep turning him down. I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, well, we're, I'll hold these thoughts until after break, but there's a lot of them when it comes to this show. Dude, I'm really disappointed that Adam Pierce was such a great GM, and then all of a sudden he just became every geek GM they ever had. Back in a moment, Observer Live. If you love these video clips... Head down there to the bottom right-hand side of the screen and click Join. For just $7.99 per month, you get full access to all of the episodes. Over 300 at current count. Full-length episodes of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, and Figure Four Daily with both Lance Storm and Filthy Tom Lawler. You can also hit that subscribe button, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows are available.